Are you throwing money away by picking the wrong session type and as a virtual desktop? Or even worse, locking yourself into Windows 365 when multi-session setup might have done the job better? If you're not 100% sure which one's right, then this video is going to save you time, frustration and lots of money. So today I'm breaking down the real world differences between as a virtual desktop multi-session, as a virtual desktop single session and Windows 365. And more importantly, which one should you be using in 2025? We're going to cover performance, cost, licensing, user experience, even the gotchas that Microsoft documentation don't warn you about. So whether you're designing a really lean DAS rollout for thousands of users, or you're just trying to figure out how to support remote contractors securely, this is the breakdown you need to make that right choice. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Neil McLaughlin, aka The Virtual Bank. On this channel, we're going to dive deep into the virtual desktop, Windows 365, Intune, and much more. If you're into that kind of stuff, please hit that subscribe button as it really helps me grow the channel. Let's get into today's video. Let's start by defining terms you'll hear over and over again in the DAS and VDI space. Multi-session, single session, and Windows 365. So first up, let's talk about multi-session. This is unique to Azure Virtual Desktop. It's one of the reasons why AVD is so powerful at scale. Multi-session means that multiple users can log on to the same virtual machine at the same time, each getting their own Windows session. I think of it like terminal services or remote desktop session host modernized in Azure. The big benefit, you can consolidate users on fewer VMs, massively reducing your compute and licensing costs. So it's perfect for task workers or frontline teams who don't need a dedicated machine. But if you misconfigure it or overload the VM, you're going to get performance issues fast. So it needs really good management and auto scaling. I'd recommend a solution like this. Next up, we got single session. Single session is exactly what it sounds like. It's one user per virtual machine. This model is available in both Azure Desktop and also Windows 365. In AVD, single session VMs give the users their own dedicated VM, ideal for power users, developers, or those running legacy or performance heavy applications. In Windows 365, every user gets their own personal cloud PC. It's always on and it's assigned. That's still single session, it's just fully managed by Microsoft. So Windows 365 is Microsoft's cloud PC platform where the infrastructure is managed entirely by Microsoft. You choose a cloud PC SKU like two CPUs, eight gigs of RAM, or go higher end for developers and execs. You don't need to worry about the back end. No VNets, no auto scaling, no session hosts, just assign the license and boom, the user gets a persistent personal desktop they can access from anywhere. It's simple, secure, predictable, but not always the cheapest or most flexible compared to Azure Virtual Desktop. The biggest difference between Windows 365 and Azure Virtual Desktop is Azure Virtual Desktop is consumption based, whereas Windows 365 is subscription based. Okay, but we're going to go into that shortly in the next section. To recap, multi session is Azure Virtual Desktop only and it's great for shared use and cost savings. Single session is available in both AVD and Windows 365, perfect for dedicated machines, and Windows 365 itself is all about simplicity, persistence, and Microsoft managed infrastructure. And now let's look at some of the cost comparisons and also talk about what use case fits those scenarios. For the cost comparison, we're gonna use a tool called Nodia Modeler, all right? And this'll tell us what the cost differences are between single session, multi-session, and Windows 365. All right, so let's get into that. So I'm gonna share my screen and show you this. This is the Nodio Modeler. In here, we can plan out our environment. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a fictitious company called ABC. Right, and this company has got 2,000 employees, but maybe 1,500 of them work at any one time. Let's look at this and see what these costs are going to be. So I'm going to click on the add model, and I'm going to call this model name. So first of all, we'll do the multi-session. Okay, so let's do the model, model, hang on, ABC, ABC, multi. Okay, Windows to host board name, so win 11, multi. And this is the desktop experience. So first of all, we are going to choose AVD multi-session desktop. We are going to have 2000 users in here. We're going to host it in EQS2, just for simplicity. So when there's a multi 2000 users, what we're going to do then is pick how many users per vCPU. Realistically, what I generally see is I'm going to say heavy. We're going to have two users per CPU. And what that means is, say for example, the machine's got eight cores. We're going to say we can put 16 users onto that VM. So I'm going to pick a D8, maybe D8 AEDS V6, for example. 
Okay. So that's one of the newer SKUs. We're going to pick a premium SSD from multi-session rather than a local SSD. And then when the VM switched off, it's going to use a standard HDD because we can do the disk swapping. Okay. So we're going to click next. We are just going to use the marketplace. So we're not going to bother with a custom one. And we're going to do work hours Monday to Friday, nine till six. And maybe we've got 10% users absent at any one time. We are going to use FS Logix as your premium files. And it's going to give us a profile size of 30 gigs and click next. This is what it is going to spit out. Okay. This is breaking down all the costs, what it will cost you for moving Azure. Caveat, it doesn't include a near deal license cost, but I just want to do a direct side by side comparison. So in here, you can see the compute. It's going to cost of like £8,000 for those many users. We've got the FH Logix costing us like £8,000 as well. In fact, what we could probably do is take that down. I'm going to say to 10 gig. That's probably a bit more realistic. So we've got a per user cost of £6 per user. Okay using Nadio savings and then we've got total hostable costs of around twelve thousand pounds per month and if you go down as well it's going to tell us exactly how many uh, session hosts that we need so use of per cpu we've got dads v5 sorry v6 i need to remember saying that so basically here we've got 16 no we've got uh, 125 session hosts okay and that's what it's worked out the cost of those session hosts are running from uh, from 9 a.m till 6 p.m okay all right, so that's the multi-session. So remember this, our total hostable cost is £12,000 a month, okay, for 2,000 users, which gives us a per-user cost of £6.18. Without Nerdio, it will be £17.94. So I'm going to save that and compare that to a single session. So model name, ABC, single. You can click that model name, so win 11, single. And now we're going to pick ABC single session. So ABC single session personal. And we want 2,000 users. Again, we're just going to stick to East US. We're going to pick a custom. And then we are going to pick a D2 ADS puppy a V6, which is two cores and eight gigs of RAM. Okay. And then we're going to pick a standard SSD because we don't need premium SSD for a single session desktop. So we click next. We can use marketplace image. Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then maybe we're going to have 10% of users absent. So I'm going to click next. I'm not going to use FH Logic profiles because we don't need those. So that's come out as £44,000 a month for those single session desktops, which gives us a per user cost of £22 a month. Minus that gives us a per user cost of £70 a month. Right. So remember that. So we're now at £22 a month for the single session desktops, which again, speaking from experience, that's pretty accurate. And then we've got the disk cost swapping as well. This doesn't include the NADIO license manager costs. And if you look at the advanced details, it's basically telling us how many desktops you need in here as well. We've got 2000 session hosts running 45 hours a week. I've not done reserved instances here. Sometimes it can be cheaper to do reserved instances. We won't go into that in detail today. This is very high level, we're keeping it right. Okay, so we've got single session, We've got multi-session, right? So we're going to click add model. And now we're going to do Windows Species 5. Model name, Windows Species 5. Next. And I'm going to call this Windows Species 5 ABC BC Win365. So here you can see Windows 365 Cloud PC. And I'm going to select 2,000 users. But next, a user profile type persistent. Local app permission needed, no. Enter IG, a join. Microsoft Hosting Network, click next. And then we're going to use a two CPU, eight gigs and 120 gigs disk, same size as the existing single session desktops. Maximum current users. So I'm actually going to set this to 75%. So what this is, out of those 2000 users, how many users are going to be using the desktop at any one time? You can put it to 50%. So that'd be like a thousand users. You can see the cost difference there is 46,000 pounds. If that number goes up, you need more licenses and therefore the cost will go to 61,000 pounds a month. So let's keep it at 50%. Okay. All right. So saying what we're saying here is if we buy 2000 licenses or use 2000 licenses, 1000 people use those licenses. This is how it's going to cost. That's given us a per user cost of 2315. Okay based on a thousand licenses for 2000 people. Remember that save and close. All right, basically let's just do a quick recap of where we are. We have multi session, 2000 users, giving us a per user cost of six pound 18 total Azure costs run into 12,000 pounds a month. Nerdio savings, 65%.
So that's the cheapest solution. Then we have single session desktops. So this is if we have 2000 desktops running 10% absence, so 90% of the desktops running all the time. And that's given us a total cost of 44,000 pounds a month. And therefore per user cost equals 22 pounds and 5p a month, okay? And then we got Windows 365, 2000 users based on 1000 users using it currently gives us a per user cost of 23 pounds and 50 pounds total subscription cost of 46 thousand pounds which is pretty much the same as the single session desktops which is generally what we see out there as well in summary definitely this is a very familiar story multi-session cheapest okay single session more expensive generally double and um, or even triple or quadruple depending on how many users are using the desktop and then you get windows 365 which is obviously similar cost if you're running those single session desktops like eight hours a day the real cost savings come into single session desktops if maybe the users only use the desktops for like four hours a day then you, you your cost is going to half essentially so very much depends on those use case workloads generally what we see is customers use all three of those methods they've got some workloads on the multi session a remote app or something or they just need very light usage or they've got very consistent applications like call centers or something like that and they're quite happy to sit on a multi session desktop all day long and just work away then you may have another department who uses single session desktop they need really long spreadsheets or algorithms that use lots of cpu so they may need a single session desktop but they may only use that desktop for maybe 20 hours a month or something that would be a good use case for dedicated to single session desktops and then you have your other workers your normal workers they work nine to five and they need single session desktops as well but they want a good user experience think about execs think about doctors those people who need that consistent experience dedicated desktop and happy to pay maybe a little bit more they're the use case that you found to windows 365 the good thing about these difference is that we have a choice right we don't have to fit one solution to all i can say this business use case fits this technical capability this business use case fit this technical capability and using a tool like nerdio you can just manage it all within one place okay that's the cost defined now i'm going to walk you through a decision matrix let's discuss this in more detail i'm just going to share my desktop we talked about AVD. Let's talk about the different use cases we generally see out there in the wild. The first one is task workers. These are people who generally do a job, which is pretty much the same. Maybe they work in it. They're importing data into a spreadsheet. These generally are good for AVD multi-session because it's cost effective. They said they don't need any customization. They work with a small number of applications to do their job. Very much popular use case around the AVD multi-session. Only thing to watch out for is performance, right? to make sure that we're not overloading the session hosts. That's where Nerdio auto scaling can help. The next use case is around power users and developers, right? So these are very much going to be either AVD single session or potentially Windows 365 as well, depending on how many hours they use that desktop for. They need those desktops because they have dedicated resources and their own developer tools on there. Maybe they need to run code, compile code overnight, that kind of thing. But they need a highly customized desktop with local admin permissions. Okay. Downside to that, obviously, is you're paying more for the desktop. Devbox is definitely becoming more and more use case. I hear it out there. A lot of customers using Devbox as well. That's the power users and developers scenario. And then we've got our execs and VIPs. Generally, these people need constant access to their desktop. They want a consistent user experience. They need something which is going to work all day, every day when they connect to that desktop. They need that persistent experience where that desktop is available. No matter where they are in the world, they need to be access to access that desktop in a consistent manner. So Windows 365, definitely a good use case for those people. You don't mind paying that extra bit of money and to give them that, that good, really good user experience. And that's the same for all scenarios, not just exact VIP. So if you have a certain sub that a business who really needs constant access without any interruptions, like there's no auto scaling problems or something, then that's also a really good use case. And to Windows 365, 
And then we got contracts and BYD. Maybe Windows 365, maybe single session, maybe multi, depending on the use case. So in that scenario, the good thing about the Windows 365 in that scenario is it's just you can throw away the licenses, you can subscribe for a month and then just give it to someone else. I generally see a lot of contracts using multi-session. They may just need to go into the environment to do very simple tasks like put their timesheet in or something where remote app may be a good scenario for that as well. And lastly, we've got short-term pulled use that could also fall into the sort of contractors BYD scenario maybe I work from home on a Friday I just need to access my desktop on Friday I go into the office Monday to Thursday where I use my laptop for example and that's also common but yeah short term pulled use you've got AVD multi-session where we can just assign it maybe someone needs access for a week or something or maybe they're just working on a sigma project they can just bung them into a generic sort of pulled host pool to use those resources so they're the main scenarios that we generally see. I hope this has been useful. It can get confusing about which solution to use. Every requirement is different, but the good thing is we have the flexibility and we know we can either do a multi-session, we can do a single session, or we can do Windows 365. Ultimately, it comes down to cost. Okay, that's the one thing which it always comes down to. Multi-session is a lot cheaper than single session or Windows 365 because you're sharing those resources, but you've got the performance hit potentially and the complications of running that environment. In the end of the day, it's all down to the budget. If there's a budget scenario, then multi-session will win all the time. Then you've got the single session. Obviously, I normally recommend single session if the user just needs access now and again. If they need 40 hours a week access, we need to talk about Windows 365. Yeah, and if they need to access that desktop for 10, 15, 20 hours a month. Let's talk about single session because the difference between Windows 365 and single session is single session AVD is consumption based. You pay for what you use, right? So if you're not logged onto that desktop, you're not paying for it, which is why it makes sense to say if I'm only using that desktop for 10, 15 hours a week, it's cheaper to run it on AVD than it is on Windows. If I've got a workload which is running Windows 365 or sorry, if I've got a workload which 30, 35, 37 hours a week, then generally that's going to sit on Windows 365, okay? Because it becomes a tipping point where it becomes more economically viable um, to have those desktops on Windows 365. The other thing you need to think about is, say in this scenario, I've got 2,000 users, I buy 2,000 Windows 365 licenses. If only 100 people use those licenses, then we've got a big problem because we've paid for 2,000 licenses. Whereas with a virtual desktop, if I assign 2,000 people to the desktops and only 100 people use it, then I've only paid for those 100. To make things a bit more complicated, there are a couple of Windows 365 SKUs that you can use, like shared licenses. We won't go into that today because I'll just complicate things even further. I'm just trying to keep it simple here. But yeah, that's the huge caveat that you have about Windows 365 licenses. You pay for it, whether you use it or not. Generally, what we're seeing out there at the moment is pockets of all this stuff. A customer may have 40 Windows 365 licenses. They may have 500 people on their AVD multi session desktops, and they maybe have 100 power users on their single session desktops because we've mapped those different scenarios to different business units. Yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video. I just wanted to highlight what the difference options are today and the cost differences, and you can see the cost differences are quite huge. So yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Put a comment below what you're seeing out there, what you're using. But to me, it should never be a use this. It should be, let's use the one which better fits the right business scenario. So find yourself using all three. That's it for this week. I'll see you next week. Thank you.